thank you, Lord. Just let us come. Thank you for every battle you fought for us this week, every victory you gave us. Thank you for all your provisions, and thank you, God, for being in good health. That we can come today and we can worship you in this place. Father, you're worthy, and we want you to reign supremely as we come to worship on this day. Lord, bless us, every aspect of this worship service, as we sing, as we pray, as we praise, as we play on the instruments, God. We want you to be glorified. And so, Lord, thank you. Have your way. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet in the presence of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord our God. Amen. You just keep on praying and you know the Lord is
Today's message will be taken from the division of Psalm and uh, Psalm 1 particularly. Psalm number 1 is where today's message will come from. And I'm going to read the first three verses. Your translation may read a little differently. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Begin reading with verse number 1. Very familiar division of Psalm. The word of God says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, <clears throat> nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. In difficult times, you know that God here still bless you, don't you? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Yes. Thank God for the reading of his word. God Amen. bless his word and the people of God. And this time, our praise team, they're going to come. And uh, they're going to lead us in a time of praise and uh, worship. You know what I, I believe? I believe that everybody ought to be a praise team. Now. Yes, For the Bible says that everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Now listen, I shouldn't have to have a title or be a member of a specific group to praise God. Y'all know God is worthy, don't you? Yeah. I mean, God, he's worthy. He's worthy. So let us worship the Lord this morning as we come. As the, as the musicians play and the praise team come, just think of the goodness of our God. Amen. This is the day This is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made I will rejoice
God, we give you praise today, God. You're worthy. And we thank you, God, because we love you today. And all of our worship shall be flowing unto you, God. And right now, we just offer up our praise, our undivided attention, God. You're welcome in this place. I lift my hands and toes to adoration unto you.
David played something you had heard before, he put a different twist to it. But it blessed all. As I listened, falling in love with Jesus from a different way of playing it, it just blessed me. Thank you so much. I was going to go on and bring today's message at this moment. Um, Brother Gerald has an announcement to make. And as I was sitting there, and I thought about the nature of the announcement, it's a good time because there are people who are cold. There are people who don't have some things we take for granted. And when we come in and we worship God, we're not to forget those who are less fortunate than we are. That's right. And there are some things that we have that we can bless other people with. Amen. And we can just only release them to where they need to be. Amen. So, so Brother Gerald, if you would, if you would come on, and I, and I pray that you'll hear this announcement with your heart as well. Good morning, St. Paul family. Good morning. Good morning. This is from the Shares Ministry, and uh, we are collecting for the Arms of Love Academy. This is an organization down in Chester. And what they are collecting, or what we are collecting, are new and uh, gently used winter coats, winter hats, scarves, gloves, and blankets. So if you have some of these items around home, like me, I have coats that I can't wear anymore. There's nothing wrong with them, they're just too big now. But uh, there's somebody that can, can use these items. Yeah. So please give out of the kindness of your heart. The drop off location will be our room back here. If you don't, if the room is locked, just see one of the uh, members. And I think you know most of them here. Uh, if you can't find anyone, find me. And we'll make sure that they get put in there. The deadline for this is December 31st, so you have time. So go home, look in your closets, bring these items, so you can be a blessing to someone during this time of year. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. While I'm here, Sister Loretta has an announcement right quick, Pastor. We're out of your way. Amen. So, so um, 
This morning's message, I stated earlier, is taken from Psalm, the division of Psalm, and specifically Psalm number one. And the title of today's message is The Right Path to Prospering. Right. Hmm. The Right Path to Prospering. Now, before today's service, I had a number of people polled to see how they would navigate from here to downtown Rock Hill. And I want to give two of the responses um, of how people would get from here to downtown. And this is the first response. And, and some of you, you may can identify with these uh, different directions, and some of you may not, and you may be totally different. But, but listen, the first person said, make a right out of the parking lot. Make a right at the stop sign at the end of the road. And at the next stop sign, make a left and then an immediate right. They say, take the right at the stop sign and you're now on McConnell's Highway. And they say that McConnell's Highway merges into Cherry Road. Stay on Cherry Road until you come to the intersection of Cherry and Main next to the gas company. And then they say, take a right and keep straight and you'll end up on East Main, downtown Rock Hill. Can any of y'all identify with those directions? Amen. Okay, here's the second person that was polled. This person said, take a left at the side of the road. And in other words, when you leave out of here, you get there to High Road, take a left. Okay. Then they said, take a left at the end of that road. And then they say, go down to the cow pasture. <laughs> <laughs> then take a left at the stop sign. Keep straight through the intersection and you'll end up on Brattonville Road. Mm -hmm. Then take a right on the Marble Store Road mm -hmm. and stay on that road until you merge with Dave Lott. Mm -hmm. Get you downtown. Can anybody identify with those directions? Mm -hmm. Huh? Part of them. <laughs> okay, so 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 they they gave two different directions in order to end up at the same place. About a month ago, we were out here cleaning at the church when we decided around noon that we'd go and get something to eat, and and my sister rode with me to Chester. And immediately when I left out of the parking lot and I turned on the high road, I made a right on to Colony, and then I was going to make a left on to York Road. She told me I was going the wrong way. <laughs> she told me that I was supposed to, when I got to the end of Howe Road, to make a left on the Colony, go down to Darby, take a right, and then follow Darby all the way out to come back into York Road. <laughs> now, I won't tell y'all which sister you want to go. Y'all can just guess. But even though, somebody called her name, even though we had two different ways of getting to the same place, the, at the end of the journey, we were still ended up at the same destination. All right. Now, the objective of today's message is to show how that there are different ways to achieve the same objective. Today's message today deals more with prosperity than anything else. And you all know in this modern culture, there are many messages about prosperity that are flooding the airway. These messages tend to draw the attention of a multitude of people because people want to prosper and people want to enjoy prosperity. 
And I need to state for the record, I am not against prosperity. However, I am against prosperity teaching that does not align with sound biblical teaching. Amen. How can I be against prosperity teaching when there are many examples in scripture of how God makes people prosper? Mm -hmm. Consider these passages, 2 Chronicles 26, verses 3 through 5. The Bible says Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of God according to all his father Amaziah had done. He sought, the, he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding and visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Consider Joshua 1.8. Here, the, the word of God saying, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night to observe and to do accordingly to all that is written in it. For then you would make your way prosperous and then you would have good success. For everybody today, God is not against you prospering. Amen. 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 People look at a little preacher like me who preaches in the rural community and they say that he's out of touch with things he is against prosperity no I'm not against prosperity how can I be against anything that God is not against Amen. Amen. having said this I need you to pay attention to three things I'm about to tell you the first thing I want to say is all prosperity is not of God. Amen. Amen. Please make a note of this. All Amen. prosperity is not of God. Right. Secondly, I want to say that all prosperity is not a blessing. And thirdly, I want to say not all saints in the Bible were rich regarding having abundance of material things. Amen. Now let's go back and I want to just kind of uh, uh, just kind of stress these points and uh, clear these three points up what I just said. First of all, all prosperity is not of God. In Psalm 37, the psalmist, he was a little bit disturbed because he had observed life and he had witnessed how some people who were wicked seemed to have been doing better off than people who were righteous. Did that bother you sometimes? When you look at your situation and your circumstances and you know that you try to be the best you can be. There are things that people who just keep on praying, they can't pray. And after praying and trying to live right, some of these same folk look at folk who did not pray. Mm -hmm. Folk who weren't trying to do the right thing, and they seem to have been better off. Mm -hmm. The psalmist experienced this. And, and, and here is, is, is what the Lord directed him in verse number 7 of Psalm 37. It's, he says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because the man who brings wicked scheme to pass it. In other words, he said, you ought to just rest. You know, don't get upset, don't get in a tizzy, eh? because other folks seem to be doing better than you are when you're trying to do right because of a wicked person who brings evil scheme to pass and it looks as if they're doing better than you are. Don't get upset. I need to tell somebody today who's in that mold, take a chill pill. <laughs> Amen. Take a deep breath. Don't get upset because someone seems to be better, doing better than you are and you're doing the best you can. Hear Jeremiah's word, Jeremiah 12 and 1. Jeremiah said to God, he said, Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. He said, yet 
let me talk with you about your judgments. Jeremiah trying to <laughs> give God some advice. <laughs> Yet let me talk to you about your judgment. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal treacherously? He said, I, I don't understand it, God. I, I'm trying to do the best I can do. And I'm looking at these folks, and I just need you to help me with this. I want to know why does the wicked seem to prosper? People who deal in evil ways. They don't value you. They may not even value human life. Why are they happy? Do that bother you sometimes? You look at other folk, and I'm just talking about real people today. Real people who understand that you just don't understand why other folks seem to be getting ahead who don't seem to be living right, and you're living for God, and you can't get ahead. Jeremiah and the psalmist, they had a problem, and Jeremiah said, God, I need you to help me to understand this thing. Yeah, that's true. Some people prosper in wrongdoing yeah. rather than prospering because they're doing right. Yeah, right. Secondly, our prosperity is not a blessing. Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and, 30, and 37. Uh, the Bible said, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If someone were to have everything and lose his, and lose his or her soul, has that prosperity been a blessing? If you can have all the money in the world and you end up in hell, was that a blessing? <laughs> this is what Jesus asked. What does it prosper? A uh, profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul. The Bible tells a story about a rich man who lifted up his eyes in hell. This rich man. He ate good and he wore fine linens, but his prosperity ultimately was not a blessing. Listen to what Luke writes in Luke 16, 23 and 24. The Bible said, being tormented in Hades, he lifts up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried, saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am tormented in this flame. Mm -hmm. Now let me help you with something. The rich man didn't go to hell because he was rich. That's right. That's right. Amen. Everybody, everybody know right. that? That's right. Amen. He didn't go to hell because he was rich. A rich man went to hell because his heart wasn't right. Amen. You can be rich, filthy rich, mm -hmm. and you can still go to heaven. That's right. And you can be busted broke mm -hmm. and still go to hell. Mm -hmm. the, the rich man's riches didn't send him to hell. His heart was not right with God, so he ended up in hell. You see, not all prosperity is a blessing. Sometimes when you have something and you don't know how to handle what you have, it's not a blessing to you. Thirdly, thirdly, not all saints were rich in the Bible with material goods. Listen at this. Listen at this. I'm going to help somebody today. In Romans 15 verses 24 through 26, this, this is Paul's journey now, and it says, he says, whenever I journey to Spain, I will come to you, for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you. If first I may enjoy your company for a while, but now I'm going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. Write down that word, saints. He said, for it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. So Paul, he's taking up an offer. Paul is going to Jerusalem. The purpose of going to Jerusalem, he's going to take some funds 
to the poor saints in Jerusalem. I mean, these are the folk who love God, but they're poor. And so Paul, he lifts this offering and he takes it to Jerusalem that he might be a blessing to them. So, so here's what I want to tell you so you don't get caught up in this little walk theology. People want us to believe that if you are righteous or right with God, you're going to be rich. Hmm. And I don't want you to get confused. There are going to be some poor folk who love God. Jesus said, you have the poor with you always. Yes. Your, your prosperity or the lack of your prosperity is not a reflection of whether or not you're a godly person. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there are some folk going to tell you, if you're trying to live with God, Lord, you will have all of this. Just stop because the Bible don't teach that. You can't prove that to me anywhere in scripture because that's not what the Bible said. I gave you an example in Romans and Paul was taking his offering because there were some poor folk in Jerusalem and they were saints. And I'm sitting and standing among people today who love God. Mm -hmm. Some of you have more than others have. Whether you have it or whether you don't have it, it's not indicative of what you have being an indication of whether or not you love God. Amen. Amen. They're folk who are broke and they love God. Amen. And I thank God for those folk who love God, whether they're rich or whether they're poor. And don't, don't try to judge them by what they have or what they do not have. Right. Now by the time I get finished here today, I'm going to see some things a little more clearly because there are reasons why we are in condition that we're in that we're in sometimes I've discovered that one thing that both sinners and saints have in common sinners and saints alike want to prosper now you're in the day you don't want to prosper raise your hand if you're in the day you want to prosper raise your hand I said, raise your hand. I got both of mine. <laughs> Why? Because, yes, I, I like you. I'm no different. I want to prosper. Yeah. And, and I'm sure everybody in here wants to prosper. The difference between saints and sinners is that we take two different paths to prosperity. Yeah. Amen. There's a right path to prosperity. And there's a wrong path to prosperity. In Psalm 1, the psalmist teaches us the right path to prosperity. In, in this psalm, you'll understand that the psalmist, he didn't do anything unethically. The psalmist didn't do anything underhandedly. The psalmist didn't do anything unjustly. But the psalmist, he prospered. The psalmist, he prospered not because he was seeking prosperity. The psalmist prospered because prosperity was the byproduct of righteous living. Now, 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 once again, there are people who will live right and they won't be rich according to the world's standards. There are people who will live right and they will be rich according to the world's standards. Some saints will be poor, not because God has not blessed them. Y'all hear me good today because I'm trying to help somebody. Some saints are going to be poor, not because God has not blessed them. Some saints are going to be poor because they don't know how to manage their money. Amen. Man, that's a good place to have an amen right there. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking to them. Do, do, do y'all know that there's some folk that had enough money to go through their heads? They could have been millionaires by now. Amen. But the truth of the matter is, there's some folk that don't know how to manage their money. God has blessed them, and it's just like a bag with a hole in it. The more God gives them, the more it falls out. And I want to be behind and walk through and pick them up. <laughs> just don't know how to measure their money. A lot of Christians, saved, 
sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, don't know how to manage their money. They get broke. They don't know how to set boundaries. They don't know how to set priorities. And it's not because God has not blessed them. They didn't do the right thing with what they had. Do you know when it comes to finances, you have to set some priorities in life? I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, with the, with the hair that I still have, I can go get me a curly kid if I want to. Don't do that. Don't do that. I, I, got, I got better places to put my money. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what good is it going to do you to walk around with beautiful nails and you don't have enough money to go and buy some sand? It, it just don't, it don't make any sense. Right? And again, I'm, I'm trying to help some of us because it is time for us to be empowered that we can lift ourselves out of poverty when God has given us what we need. And sometimes we're in those places because we just don't know how to manage what we have. And I'm almost finished today. Listen, I, I need you to consider several points about prosperity in this person's life in Psalm 1. These points are oftentimes overlooked by many readers who are just seeking to prosper. The first point I want to make about this man, this man prospered by doing what was right. Or he was doing something right. The key word in there is something. Notice he was doing something. Mm -hmm. You see, I have a problem with people teaching this whole concept of prosperity without doing anything. Now, I want you to know today, if you sit around waiting on your money to fall out of the sky, you're going to be broke. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm pushing against some of the mainstream, mainstream teaching about prosperity because some folks just sit around and what they say, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to name it, and I'm going to claim it. How much have you named and claimed? <laughs> really, there's some folks that died broke and they were claiming it. And, I, and some folks going to give them the pushback and say, well, I ain't going to buy into what you say because now you're speaking against my faith. I'm speaking against faulty teaching. Yeah. 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 Because the Bible does not teach that you can sit around and do nothing and expect the prophet. Let, let me give you a scripture. Proverbs 10, 4. Here the Bible says, he who has a slack hand shall become poor. But the diligent hand, uh, the diligent hand makes rich. <laughs> now what the Bible said, the Bible said, if you sit around and you don't do anything, you know what, you're going to be broke. But you're willing to work. You're willing to do something. The Bible said that the diligent hand makes rich. Don't, don't, don't buy into all this hype today that you can just sit around, you can sit at home. I'm going to sit at home, I'm going to keep the house, I'm going to sit at home and do the yard, and then the next thing you know, I'm going to be rich because the Bible said that my God supplies all your need and God's going to give you all this. God will supply you, but God wants you to have some sense too. Amen. And God wants you to do something. And there are too many of us who sit around and won't do nothing and expect to be rich. Amen. Don't, 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 don't come to me with that stuff. I don't care if there's some preacher, and there are a lot of preachers who are more smarter than I am. There are a lot of preachers, you know, have more accolades. There are a lot of preachers who got the fame and all that. I don't care about any of that. But what I do care about is the people of God getting the right teaching so you will understand that you want to be blessed. You got to do something. You read this psalm, this psalmist, he's doing something. The Bible teaches us that this man, he is busy. Consider this passage here. And, and then, I'm, again, I can, I'll be out here. First Peter 3, verses 10 through 12, the Bible says, For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from even his lip from speaking deceit. 
Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against all those who do evil. In other words, if you want to be blessed, you got to do some right things. That's right. That's all I want you to know. You do the right thing. Starting with God. You do some things that are right. Then the Lord, he will bless you. The second point about this man from this psalm is this. The man's prosperity didn't come overnight. Somebody please write that down. His prosperity didn't come overnight. When you read it, the Bible said that this man meditated in the law of the Lord both day and night. Not one day, one night, but day and night. This man's prosperity didn't come overnight. I need to help somebody today by telling you that some things are achieved over time. Amen. How many of us have been blessed because certain things, they came over time? You achieve some things over time. Some of us have the bank account that we have because we work and save over what? Time. Amen. You wouldn't have nothing. Boy, the people trying to help me preach today. <laughs> either, either, either I'm doing good. Or either I'm not doing good enough. But, but the point of the matter is this. Some people, they don't want to accumulate something over time. They want it right now. Some of our bank accounts, don't y'all raise your hand. Some of our bank accounts are where they are because we work and we put something back over time. You can't work and spend everything today. You got to put something back because you're going to need it on a later day. You know some folk can't retire because they didn't put anything back. Some things come over time. Let me just say this now. Some, some of us, we, we, we drive a vehicle, we drive. Today, because it took time. Anybody been like I've been? You wherever you gonna get from point A, well, you know how to get to leave point A. <laughs> and I heard you years the ministry, man. I done told that story. So if I bore you, listen to it again. Listen. <laughs> Susan and I, we were, I told folk, we, did, we didn't have a lot. We didn't. But we had love and happiness. All right. <laughs> now, now, somebody don't go right down the street. We had love and happiness. <laughs> but we didn't, we, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have a lot. That's not We would go for each and people, people would make and, and my wife, she still has a head down. They should make fun of her clothes. They made fun of our clothes. Sometimes we had to call mom and daddy. Say, daddy, we're coming home this way. The car break down. <laughs> y'all know where y'all can find us. We didn't have, we didn't have much. The first church I passed, I got $60 every two weeks. But we had what? Love and happiness. Some of us drive what we drive now because we acquired it over time. And with the modern day mentality, every people want everything right now. Sometimes it takes time to get what you want. I, don't, I mean, I don't have the best car, but I thank God for what I got. Yes, it's an older car, but I bless you, Brother Good. If you start acting funny, I call Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> but the point I want to make is God blessed us yeah. over time. So if I ride up in here, or if my wife rides up in here on something new on Sunday morning, don't look at her funny and say, Well, she thinks she's all that, or they doing this. You don't understand our story. Amen. 
some of our wardrobes. As I said earlier, we got them over time. Some of the houses we're living in now, it took time to get where we are. Everything don't come overnight. Even though I know that's not a popular opinion today, that people think you're going to get it right now. But young people, young people, listen to me. Good. Some things are only going to happen over time. Save your money. Don't, don't go out there and pay somebody who sells off your profit. Send me $1,000 and you'll get $2,000. No, you put that money in the bank and you earn some interest on your money. You make some good investments. And I declare it'll pay off over time. Tell me about the video, I mean, the YouTube, YouTube thing. Sometimes I get a thumbs up. I guess I'm supposed to say. <laughs> but listen, I want you to know I'm giving you what God has already given. Amen. Some Amen. things happen over time. Amen. Whenever we desire, whatever we desire out of life, Amen. that is good. Understand that it takes the right path. That's all I want to tell you today. If we take the right path according to the word of God, then I want you to know that God will bless us. And the final thing I want to tell some of you today, and I want you to receive this in Jesus' name, some of you are more blessed than you think you're blessed. That's right. Say that. That's what I'm going to finish on. That's all right. Some of y'all are more blessed than you realize. Amen. And I'm looking over here, but I'm not just talking. I'm talking to everybody. Amen. Everybody, some of us are more blessed than we realize. Amen. You, you are blessed. You are better than blessed. I want you to hear what the psalmist said here. And, and, and yet this is the last passage of the day. But I want you to know that you're blessed more than you realize in so many ways. Amen. Psalm 37 the Bible says a little that a righteous man has is better than many, many riches of the wicked. Can I say that again? It helps yes. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arm of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil times. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Don't it sound like that they're blessed? Yes. Don't have a whole lot, but you're still blessed. Yes. Yes. I mean, look at you today. You're more blessed than you realize. Yes. Three years of a pandemic, yes. I declare my fountain didn't dry up. Yes. Three years of a pandemic, my pants and the COVID always had something in it. Three years of the pandemic didn't miss paying the gas bill, the electrical bill. Three years of the pandemic, I had good clothes on my back, good shoes on my feet. Three years of the pandemic, God, he kept on blessing me. You blessed more than you realize.
But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Thank you. That's right. Your seed begging bread. That's right. We're going to take care of it. All over this building today, God loves you.
what's been spoken. But what you revealed, I revealed. What you gave, I have given. And I thank you today for shackles that will fall off. I thank you today for the manifestation of blessings and deliverance. I thank you today for the shackles of poverty being broken. And I thank you today, God, for the spirit of empowerment.